So, initially we will begin with the biomedical model, okay. then we would be talking about the medical model and the psychological adjustment, how do we uh, relate both of them. Uh, thereafter, our focus would be on the adjustment process per se uh, and then we would be talking about how with respect to the concept of adjustment, how do we define the whole construct of normality. Okay. Remember uh, that uh, in the beginning we had said that we would be looking at the whole concept of normality, the whole issue of adjustment with respect to three uh, different parameters, which at times might overlap, at times it might be little different. Uh, that would be looking at it from a social viewpoint, looking at it from a legal viewpoint, many a times without quoting the law. And third, uh, looking at it from a pure psychological perspective. Okay. Now, uh, the inherent issue with the biomedical model is uh, that it is primarily a dominant model uh, to define diseases. Okay. And uh, with the gradual change in the time, we find that more and more uh, emphasis has been laid to the molecular biology side of it. So, in most of the cases, you uh, visit a consultant physician and he tells you to undergo a certain set of tests based on which uh, judgments are made. Okay. And these judgments define whether you have certain types of illnesses, certain types of diseases or not. Now, uh, the main issue here is full uh, no, uh, diseases are accounted by deviation from the norms. So, there is a defined norm okay, uh, with respect to certain biological variables and how much you deviate from the norm that defines whether you have the illness or not number one and number two the severity of the disease is also defined with respect to the extent of deviation. Now, uh, recollect your own experience of visiting a doctor. You go to a doctor and uh, you are asked a set of questions when you try to define the what the problems uh, you have been facing. Say, how long this has been with you, uh, issues related to aches either in the body or in the stomach or in the head. Okay. If it has to do with the eyes, then you are asked about uh, watering of the eye. If it has to do with uh, the stomach, then you are asked about uh, you know, uh, the uh, discharge of uh, the excreta and all, all such stuffs. Okay. So, finally, the idea that you derive is that there is a defined norm okay, that this is a undiseased body and how much you deviate from it in terms of your own uh, expression of symptoms that defines whether you have a disease or not and of course, the extent to which you vary from it, you differ from it that also defines that how uh, severe the symptoms are. Now, the whole of the biomedical model is based on this template and as we have already discussed that uh, psychology especially the uh, branches pertaining to uh, psychopathology, clinical psychology, uh, clinical interventions and stuffs like this, they had a heavy influence of this biomedical model. Okay. Now, this would have once again mean uh, that once you start looking at a behavioral aberration, perhaps you start following the same trend that do you have this. So, you have a checklist and you finally, start looking at how many items are finally, ticked in the checklist in terms of defining uh, whether the person has certain type of behavioral aberration or not, number one. And number two, the more and more ticks you have in the checklist, the more and more severe the problem begins, the way it is defined. Okay. Now, this is uh, you know, a model which later on uh, you know, dragged the attention of many psychologists uh, who did show their displeasure to it. Okay. Now, the biomedical model explains uh, you know, diseases in terms of measurable deviations. Okay. So, one interesting thing is that you need to deviate from the norm and two that the deviation should be measured. Okay. Now, there could be two ways of looking at it if you look at it from a psychological perspective, okay. where I ask you what type of experiences you have. Okay. 
once you have been experiencing this set of symptoms and these are all your subjective explanations. The moment I say that all these are subjective explanations, this would mean that there could be variation. No? So, 10 different people having headaches will define their symptoms in 10 different ways, there could be a possibility of this. Okay. Now, if you want to quantify it, okay, then there, were, there could be a way of doing it by simply looking at the, what we were initially talking about the molecular biology influence over medical sciences. Okay. That I just say that I look at your blood report. So, irrespective of what you say, I will only look at you know, what your WBC count is, what your RBC count is, what your plated counts are. Okay. Uh, then I look at your uh, you know, SGP, uh, SGPTI profile, then I look at some other profile. Okay. So, you have certain types of uh, functions of the body, which are you know, supposed to be indicated by certain types of tests. Okay. And uh, I am sure all of you must have undergone these types of tests. No? So, when you see the report, it says what is your value and what is the normal range. Okay. So, this is what it says, no? that once again, once you know that this is the range and once you know what your score is, okay, you know that how much you deviate from the accepted range. And the uh, larger is the deviation, much more severe is the problem. Okay. Now, uh, symptoms and behavioral uh, aberrations both okay, in uh, terms of the biomedical model, they have been explained either in terms of the biochemical regulation within the brain and the body or with respect to certain neurophysiological processes. Okay. Uh, there are uh, lots and lots of literature uh, on uh, say abnormal or pathological behavior and there you would find a large number of uh, research that is dedicated to the biochemical regulation. Okay. Uh, say for example, uh, talk about uh, psychotic disorder like uh, schizophrenia, uh, talk about uh, <coughs> disorders like uh, depression, uh, talk about uh, issues like uh, suicidal tendencies talk about something like uh, uh, post traumatic stress disorder. Okay. You have the whole range of uh, issues that has to do with uh, psychology, but then you realize uh, that uh, the adaptation of the bio, bio, biomedical model, what it has done is uh, that it once again guides you either to look at those behavioral aberration with respect to the biochemical regulation. This means that I am nothing, but I am a uh, you know, my behavioral outputs are basically a byproduct of all uh, you know, biochemical uh, imbalances that my body finally manifests. Okay. That could be true, I should not say that could be, that is actually true. Okay. But an equal amount of importance is also to be given uh, to factors which are not actually uh, know, uh, directly linked to biochemical regulation, but it has to do more and more with the uh, subjective experience of the individual. Okay. So, uh, you just say that uh, know, uh, the balance or imbalance of epinephrine and norepinephrine and that decides whether you would be under tremendous uh, stress or not. Okay. Uh, such imbalances can also say uh, how much stressed you are or I say that you no know, uh, stress has uh, you no know, made you pay the price of uh, you know, that experience simply because the cortisol level increased in your brain. Okay. What we actually see as, an, as a human being who is not looking at the behavior from a biochemical viewpoint because you do not have uh, a indicator of it, there could be a series of uh, you know, behavioral indicators that tells you that uh, no, you are probably you know, experiencing one type of a problem or the other type of a problem. And two individuals facing the same problem might vary. Okay. So, that flexibility that usually is nowadays thought about in terms of uh, you know, uh, identifying the problems of an individual, usually uh, those things are not practiced in the biomedical model. Okay. You have defined frameworks, okay, where uh, the 
subjective experience of uh, the client uh, does not pay that much of uh, uh, weightage for the consultant and primarily you start defining behavior or you shrink the individual's behavior to bio biochemical imbalances or neurophysiological uh, functions. Okay. Uh, much later in the course we would be talking about uh, stress and at that time we would also be talking about post traumatic stress disorder okay, what is called as PTSD. Now PTSD one way if you look at it from a neurophysiological viewpoint uh, there are uh, no many many research which tells that once you have a reduction in the volume of the amygdala and the hippocampus in the brain okay, that is what the PTSD patient show. What exactly we do not know is that whether you had the reduction in the volume of the amygdala and the hippocampus in the brain that led to PTSD or whether it is you know, sustained duration of PTSD that finally made your amygdala and hippocampus shrink. Okay. Now this is a neurophysiological way of looking at one of the symptoms. Uh, at that time right now we would not focus at it, but at that time we would also discuss uh, that there are growing number of researches uh, which suggests uh, that actually PTSD should not be designated as a disorder rather it is uh, no it should be defined as an extreme form of behavior which is an outcome of or which is guided by an extreme nature of stimuli. Okay. And because the nature of the stimuli itself is too extreme therefore the extreme manifestation of behavior should be accepted rather than classifying it as uh, aberrated behavior or abnormal behavior. Okay. So, that is the difference you know, uh, why uh, people have started uh, gradually you know, deviating from the biomedical model and they endorse of alternatives. Uh, little later we will also see that even within medical sciences also uh, there is a strong argument that there is a need to deviate from the biomedical model. Uh, now, this is a, a old a statement by Angel who says that in all societies the major criteria for identification of disease have always been behavioral, psychological and social in nature. Remember that right now we are uh, going to uh, tracing back ourselves to the history. No? So, we are not looking at the modern phase. So, what he says even this statement is pretty old. But he says that the major criteria of identification of all diseases were either behavioral in nature or they were psychological in nature or they were sociological in nature. Okay. Now, you do not find microbiology fitting in here. Okay. Classically, the onset of a disease is marked by changes in physical appearance that frighten, puzzle or awe and by alterations in functions, in feelings, in performance, in behavior or in relationships. Uh, that are experienced and or perceived as threatening, harmful, unpleasant, deviant, undesirable or unwanted. So, basically he says that diseases were actually considered as something that would finally physically appear and the appearance of those physical symptoms will frighten others. Means, you have not seen usually people with those uh, types of physical appearances. Say for example, take a small example those uh, who are not suffering from chicken pox, when they look at somebody who has you no know, symptoms of chicken pox. Now, you would have uh, reddening of the eye, watering of the eye and then you have you know, rashes all over the body. And that frightens you that this appearance is not the appearance which we, which we usually see in the society, which might puzzle you. Okay, you are not able to decipher what it is, but it is certainly different from what the rest uh, has. Or you could be mesmerized looking at you, you know, it is it gives you a sense of awe. And there is also there can could be an alteration in the functions, in the feeling, in the performance of the individual, in the behavior of the individual, in the relationship okay, uh, that the individual maintains. You know. So, whole lot of you now if you look at this type of an explanation okay, of looking at disease, the whole lot of subjectivity finds a space here, okay, which 
usually traditional biomedical model does not allow you to have that. Now, it is important to understand that society recognizes individuals and institutions okay, to take care of certain behaviors, which usually appears as what we were talking right now, that uh, full of frightening, puzzle, awe, okay, those type of things. So, either society recognizes individuals or society recognizes institutions. Okay. Now, profession and institutions are outcome of social needs. Now, we are now uh, no, uh, moving towards why there is a need to uh, challenge the biomedical model okay. and why biomedical model does not uh, no explain uh, behavioral aberrations in its fullest form. So, professions okay, uh, like physicians or institutions like uh, medicine. Okay. One view point is that this is actually these are uh, finally, the outcome of social needs, society needed. Let us see there are uh, you know, certain types of aberrations, there are certain types of changes in the physical appearance, there are certain types of uh, changes in the behavioral manifestations, there are certain problems with respect to maintenance of relationships. Okay that needs to be examined, that needs to be taken care of. To examine those behavioral patterns or those uh, symptoms or to cure them, to provide a care to them, okay, society felt that there should be a need of an institution. This is how the whole profession of medicine starts as a uh, no, byproduct of social need. And similarly, certain people are designated that you specialize in. Uh, no taking care, recognizing and taking care of elements like this or behavioral problems like this and they are socially accepted as professionals. Okay. Now, the contention is that if your institution and you as an individual, you as a professional is an outcome of a social need, then there should not be too much of deviation. Okay when you make your uh, no, uh, discipline or your institution uh, no, more and more scientific and hence you start drifting away from the actual normal people. Okay. Now, physicians mixed with uh, scientists, they became more and more interested in developing taxonomies. So, you have more and more uh, no, uh, name of diseases classification, sub classification of diseases. Okay. And now, application of these scientific methods okay, further uh, no, uh, which were initially try uh, in an attempt to understand, treat or prevent such disturbances okay, started uh, no, defining sicknesses as diseases. Okay. So, basically what it <coughs> says is that once your institution and you as a professional okay, start uh, no, making your uh, institution or your profession more and more scientific, okay, what has actually taken place is that the discipline itself has started deviating a uh, long uh, no, with respect to classification of the diseases, not in terms of uh, uh, say misclassification but in terms of classifying the disorder or the diseases without taking certain other issues into account. So, it has been largely either looking at uh, the biochemical uh, issues that reflects of a disease or a neurophysiological uh, mechanism that indicates of a disorder okay. and then the whole uh, know, uh, what to call quantified deviation from the standard norm which suggests that the problem is extremely grave in nature, it is severe in nature. It seems that the diagnosis, treatment and prevention has digressed from its social context and this digression has finally, uh, know, made them fit into the scientific uh, temperament, but then the context has become missing. I okay. will uh, give you a very different example, it has nothing to do with psychology. Uh, but it has to do with uh, museums, you know, preservation of certain artifacts. Uh, just this weekend, uh, we had a meeting where uh, we were talking about uh, 
preservation of certain things which has a certain uh, cultural, social or historical importance. One very interesting viewpoint was that the moment you take out any artifact and keep it in a museum, you are decontextualizing it. Okay. Uh, for example, an earthen pot okay, in its own social context would have another meaning, but it will suddenly change the moment you take one earthen pot and put it uh, you know, in a glass case in a museum, put two, three lights there and you say that I have preserved it. What you, uh, what you succeed preserving is the artifact, but what you do not succeed preserving is the social context. Okay. And this is actually a strong argument in favor of uh, you know, digitalized preservation rather than uh, making uh, museums and uh, stuffs like that. Okay. You can have a digital preservation wherein the full context along with the artifact is preserved. Okay. Uh, imagine a situation, uh, the same earthen pot that you see in the museum versus uh, you uh, know, play a video where you see the whole context and there in the social context where uh, the usage of the earthen pot, the making of the earthen pot, okay, everything comes into picture along with the pot. Okay. That gives you uh, a much better feeling and understanding of the artifact compared to a simple uh, one single artifact preserved in the museum. Okay. Now, if I extend that to this. The moment you start uh, you know, fitting in into the scientific temperament okay, and you decontextualize it from the basic uh, social acceptance, okay, the accepted social uh, norms, you realize that there happens to be mismatches at times. Okay. Uh, I am right now going, not going to talk about it in detail, uh, but just to touch that issue. The whole uh, problem with uh, institutionalization of uh, people with certain type of uh, psychotic disorders, okay. when a professional based on certain norms demarcates you to be a sufferer of certain psychotic disorders. Say you are designated as a sufferer of schizophrenia and then diagnosis is done in terms of treatment you are supposed to be institutionalized okay you are sent to a mental hospital you are supposed to be there okay for certain period of time till the professional tells you that now you are uh, fit enough to revert back to your own society okay now, you suddenly uh, know, diagnose somebody, extract that person out of the society, make that individual uh, remain in an institution and then at certain point of time you say that now you can be sent back. We have diverse examples. I am sure many of you uh, must have heard of uh, the two famous mental hospitals in India, uh, one in Ranchi, the other one in Agra. Central Institute of Psychiatry, uh, popularly called as Kanke in Ranchi. Kanke happens to be the place, it is not the name of the institution. And similarly, Agra Mental Hospital also, uh, no. both these uh, institutions came long back after uh, independence of this country. Uh, now, <coughs> the major problems faced by both these institutions were, <coughs> patients were uh, no, diagnosed they were kept as uh, in house patients means they were admitted but then the family members did not come back in many cases to take their relatives back when the doctors told that they are fit enough to revert back to their society now imagine the situation no you have hospitals always will have a limited number of beds so say if you have a 300 uh, capacity hospital you Full, uh, you have a you know, house full situation, 300 patients come there okay. and 280 patients after the doctors feel that they can be sent back to their family members, their society, the family members do not turn up to take them back. So, you are left only with 20 beds. Uh, 
uh, I can uh, share this with you that uh, uh, the institute at Ranchi, the Central Institute of Psychiatry, they had to go for a rehabilitation program. And you will find uh, that uh, the <coughs> many of the staff in that uh, institution, canteen wallas, uh, other other staff, no, uh, they were actually the previous inmates of that, that very hospital, because nobody came to take them. So, hospital had to rehabilitate them. Now, you can rehabilitate still a smaller number of people, if you have to employ them in your own institution. You cannot accommodate and you cannot rehabilitate each and every individual. So, people getting cured, but not getting accepted by the society, this is one example. Uh, you all know uh, the famous case of uh, Professor Nash, okay. when he was uh, uh, in fact, uh, told that he should be institutionalized and uh, later on um, his wife decided to take him back. Okay. Uh, he was not institutionalized, he was with his family and he could regain uh, to a certain extent. Okay. And many uh, know, miracles including Nobel Prize came, okay, after uh, know, he had the onset of the psychotic disorder and he was uh, know, being taken care by uh, his own family members, especially his wife. So, there is a payback, uh, know, when you try to make things more and more rigorous in terms of uh, scientific temperament, okay, without taking the social context into account. And that is the core issue, why there was a need felt, uh, that psychology uh, needs to deviate from the biomedical model. Okay. Now, the need to augment proximity between medical taxonomy and social categorization, categorization of the disease or disorder is considered to be the need of the time. Okay. Means, what you do is that you increase the uh, no, uh, proximity, means you minimize the distance between the medical classification of the disease or the disorder and the social categorization of the disease and the disorder. Okay. Now, you remember the medical taxonomies and the social categorization, they in many, many cases they mismatch. Okay. Uh, say something like uh, diabetes for example, okay. according to the medical taxonomy it is a disease okay. and it is not a disease of a smaller magnitude, no? because uh, you are diabetic for the full life. Okay you have to be under certain preventive measures for your rest of your life. But then, there is a great degree of social acceptance for the disease. Okay. Uh, think of uh, somebody getting uh, HIV infection. Okay. Now, you could have an infection uh, of your liver leading to jaundice, which has social acceptance. You could have something like uh, uh, lifelong disease like uh, diabetes, but there is a great degree of social acceptance for it. Nobody demarcates you that no, 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 you are untouchable because you have diabetes okay. or I would not invite you to my party because you are diabetic. Okay. In the hardcore sense of scientific temperament, it should be done so. Okay. I simply say that you have a certain type of disease, uh, where you should not be leading life the way those who are not like you should lead and hence, uh, you are de-recognized from attending any party. So, any social function or family function, you will not be uh, given an invitation, that does not happen. But somebody uh, say, who has been identified with uh, HIV infection, will uh, know, largely face this type of uh, problem throughout his life. Okay. <coughs> In fact, uh, for uh, many psychological problems and many of the medical problems also. Okay. Uh, it has been found that it is difficult for the immediate society okay, to accept certain types of diseases and disorders. And hence, uh, they need to be briefed about it, they, somebody needs to work with them. And 
of course, we are not uh, going into the details of it, but if you are interested you can uh, read it uh, from uh, other sources. That the whole issue of uh, community based rehabilitation for example, the whole uh, you know, discipline of social work for example, even within psychology you know community psychology for example. Okay. Uh, now, all these areas, all these professionals they uh, emerged out of the need that the bridge between uh, the social categorization and the medical taxonomy needs to be bridged. Okay. So, uh, that is an interesting thing uh, that needs to be understood. Now, psychologists have uh, nowadays started criticizing the way medical model has been adopted in psychology. Okay. And um, I quote uh, Joseph and Lille uh, that it might serve to help people in one sense, but that it also served to alienate and damage people in another. Okay. So, if you use this biomedical model it serves one purpose okay. in one sense, because you are able to diagnose a disorder, you are able to name a disorder, you are able to uh, talk about the preventive measures or you can talk about the uh, psychological intervention that needs to be given. But at the same time what it also does is uh, that it is starts alienating you uh, from others. Another uh, statement and very interesting statement uh, which says that identification and categorization of disorders are heuristic social artifacts that serve the same socio cultural goals as do our constructions of race, gender, social class and sexual orientations. Okay. Such categorizations are some form of socially constructed evaluations. This is a very strong statement okay. that the way we have defined race, the way we have defined gender, the way we have defined social class, the way we have defined sexual orientation, okay, where uh, you find it if you are a lesbian, gay, bisexual, there is a great degree of unacceptance. Uh, if you belong to certain other class of the society, uh, you uh, do not enjoy the privilege that the majority enjoys okay. or you are made to realize that you are the second sex. No? As a woman, you do not enjoy the full privilege that men enjoy in the society or if you are made to realize it fine, I belong to this race and you belong to that race and this race is superior than the other. Okay. These are uh, no, basically social artifacts and Murdoch's viewpoint says that the identification and the categorization of disorders, okay, they also have been done in the same fashion. Okay. And therefore, such categorizations are some form of socially constructed evaluation. So, there is one way of looking at it from a pure molecular biological perspective, you look at the biochemical regulation, you look at the neurophysiological functioning. The other counter viewpoint, okay, where it says that all these are basically socially constructed evaluations okay, and these are actually uh, artifacts which works the same way the way other uh, much bigger uh, issues of sociological importance works and therefore, there is a need to revisit them. Another statement uh, which says that to call a condition a disease is to judge that the person with that condition is less able to lead a good or a worthwhile life. And this is what it meant you know, in the previous statement when it said uh, that it somewhere damages you. Okay. Although the Joseph and Inlay's viewpoint okay, where it said that it does serve a purpose, but at the other end it also alienates you, it does uh, you know, uh, damage people in some other context. So, this is you no. Know, uh, where the moment you are classified with a certain type of disease, you are told or you are made to realize if not told directly okay, that you are uh, dissimilar compared to others in terms of living a worthy life. Now, adopting biomedical model to human behavior okay, would mean now we are not talking with respect to diseases, now we are talking with respect to uh, behavioral aberrations. So, if you adopt the uh, medical model to human behavior, that would mean that you start pathologizing behavioral characteristics that does not fit into the majority viewpoint. So, majority has a viewpoint and because it is a majority view, therefore, you consider this to be the average, the aggregate, the normal 
and because you consider that to be normal, therefore, all those who does not fit into the majority's view, they would be classified as pathological. Okay. Little later, we will uh, debate this issue at length no? and we will finally, end with uh, no, how do we define normality, then who is normal and who defines this. Now, majority does not actually represent the whole of the society. Okay. Society has its own diversity, rather it represents the ideals of the powerful individuals and institutions. Remember one thing, we are of course, uh, know, debating it this very issue in a uh, psychology uh, lecture, uh, but had this issue been raised in a sociological forum, okay, the sociologist would have endorsed this statement much more strongly, that you have a set of people who are influential, those who are powerful. Okay. They make the institutions, they recognize the professionals, they define the ideals and the rest of the society is simply supposed to be influenced by it. And this means uh, that there could be certain types of things that should not be classified the way it has been done, but because the majority did it, therefore, there are people who does not fit into that framework. Okay. Little later we will see one very interesting example of that. Now, uh, it is guided by the tendency to maintain social order that suits those who are powerful in the society. So, if you are powerful, okay, then you start uh, guiding the whole society and in order to derive more and more power in your own hands, okay, you designate certain forms, you recognize certain professionals, you recognize certain institutions, which in your viewpoint helps you maintain the social order. The social order where you remain powerful the way you are or you gain much more power and you also derive the power of tagging others with certain types of aberrations, certain types of deviations. Now, the wave of change that suits those who are powerful in the society. So, if you are powerful, okay, then you start uh, guiding the whole society and in order to derive more and more power in your own hands, okay, you designate certain forms, you recognize certain professionals, you recognize certain institutions, which in your viewpoint helps you maintain the social order. The social order where you remain powerful the way you are or you gain much more power and you also derive the power of tagging others with certain types of aberrations, certain types of deviations. Now, the wave of change is visible nowadays of course, both in the area of medical sciences, also in the area of psychology. In the area of medical sciences, now you have departments like preventive medicine okay. and there is uh, uh, an interesting area called holistic medicine, okay, which basically again is a disagreement with the biomedical model that we were talking about. Okay. Similarly, in psychology, we have now uh, two uh, branches, health psychology, uh, which focuses more and more on uh, uh, the well-being of the individual rather than looking at the pathologies. Okay. Earlier focus was on pathology. So, you take uh, older uh, textbooks of uh, uh, abnormal psychology, psychopathology, clinical psychology and you will find only and only the descriptions of one or the other form of aberration of the behavior. Now, if you turn the pages of health psychology textbook, the situation has changed. Okay. You have uh, basically the description largely of people with uh, normal types of uh, health issues. And interesting uh, development in psychology, an area called positive psychology, which talks about many, many things, okay, which otherwise was earlier classified uh, with respect to certain negative orientations, but are now uh, classified with respect to uh, their uh, social uh, and uh, personally beneficial uh, byproducts. Uh, right now, we refer to PTSD, okay, when we were talking about the biochemical regulation in terms of shrinking of amygdala hippocampus. Now, <coughs> you will, if you historically look at this disorder, uh, for long uh, know, after the Vietnam war, when this disorder finally got uh, recognized, okay, the focus was continuously on the pathology side of the behavior. No? So, you look at uh, uh, the symptoms, which are indicators of PTSD. 
you look at symptoms like say hyper arousal, hyper arousal is considered to be one of the symptoms of PTSD. Okay. Uh, in last 16, 17 years, there has now been a change in the focus and a new construct has come altogether, something called post traumatic growth. So, instead of PTSD, now the new abbreviation is PTG and PTG is basically, uh, we will discuss it at length when we come to uh, this topic, uh, when we talk about it, I guess it would be after uh, the medicine exam that suits those who are powerful in the society. So, if you are powerful, okay, then you start uh, guiding the whole society and in order to derive more and more power in your own hands, okay, you designate certain forms, you recognize certain professionals, you recognize certain institutions, which in your viewpoint helps you maintain the social order. The social order where you remain powerful the way you are or you gain much more power and you also derive the power of tagging others with certain types of aberrations, certain types of deviations. Now, the wave of change is visible nowadays of course, both in the area of medical sciences, also in the area of psychology. In the area of medical sciences, now you have departments like preventive medicine okay. and there is uh, uh, an interesting area called holistic medicine, okay, which basically again is a disagreement with the biomedical model that we were talking about. Okay. Similarly, in psychology, we have now uh, two uh, branches, health psychology, uh, which focuses more and more on uh, uh, the well-being of the individual rather than looking at the pathologies. Okay. Earlier focus was on pathology. So, you take uh, older uh, textbooks of uh, uh, abnormal psychology, psychopathology, clinical psychology and you will find only and only the descriptions of one or the other form of aberration of the behavior. Now, if you turn the pages of health psychology textbook, the situation has changed. Okay. You have uh, basically the description largely of people with uh, normal types of uh, health issues. And interesting uh, development in psychology, an area called positive psychology, which talks about many, many things, okay, which otherwise was earlier classified uh, with respect to certain negative orientations, but are now uh, classified with respect to uh, their uh, social uh, and uh, personally beneficial uh, byproducts. Uh, right now, we refer to PTSD, okay, when we were talking about the biochemical regulation in terms of shrinking of amygdala hippocampus. Now, <coughs> you will, if you historically look at this disorder, uh, for long uh, know, after the Vietnam war, when this disorder finally got uh, recognized, okay, the focus was continuously on the pathology side of the behavior. No? So, you look at uh, uh, the symptoms, which are indicators of PTSD. You look at symptoms like say hyper arousal. Hyper arousal is considered to be one of the symptoms of PTSD. Okay. Uh, in last 16, 17 years, there has now been a change in the focus and a new construct has come altogether something called post traumatic growth. So, instead of PTSD, now the new abbreviation is PTG and PTG is basically, uh, we will discuss it at length when we come to uh, this topic, uh, when we talk about it, I guess it would be after uh, the medicine exam that suits those who are powerful in the society. So, if you are powerful, okay, then you start uh, guiding the whole society and in order to derive more and more power in your own hands, okay, you designate certain forms, you recognize certain professionals, you recognize certain institutions, which in your viewpoint helps you maintain the social order. The social order where you remain powerful the way you are or you gain much more power and you also derive the power of tagging others with certain types of aberrations, certain types of deviations. Now, the wave of change is visible nowadays of course, both in the area of medical sciences, also in the area of psychology. In the area of medical sciences, now you have departments like preventive medicine okay. and there is uh, 
uh, an interesting area called holistic medicine, okay, which basically again is a disagreement with the biomedical model that we were talking about. Okay. Similarly, in psychology we have now uh, two uh, branches health psychology, uh, which focuses more and more on uh, uh, the well being of the individual rather than looking at the pathologies. Okay. Earlier focus was on pathology. So, you take uh, older uh, textbooks of uh, uh, abnormal psychology, psychopathology, clinical psychology and you will find only and only the descriptions of one or the other form of aberration of the behavior. Now, if you turn the pages of health psychology textbook, the situation has changed. Okay. You have uh, basically the description largely of people with uh, normal types of uh, health issues. And interesting uh, development in psychology, an area called positive psychology, which talks about many, many things, okay, which otherwise was earlier classified uh, with respect to certain negative orientations, but are now uh, classified with respect to uh, their uh, social uh, and uh, personally beneficial uh, byproducts. Uh, right now, we refer to PTSD. Okay, when we were talking about the biochemical regulation in terms of shrinking of amygdala hippocampus. Now, <coughs> you will, if you historically look at this disorder, uh, for long uh, you know, after the Vietnam war, when this disorder finally got uh, recognized, okay, the focus was continuously on the pathology side of the behavior. No? So, you look at uh, uh, the symptoms, which are indicators of PTSD you look at symptoms like say hyper arousal. Hyper arousal is considered to be one of the symptoms of PTSD. Okay. Uh, in last 16, 17 years, there has now been a change in the focus and a new construct has come altogether, something called post traumatic growth. So, instead of PTSD, now the new abbreviation is PTG and PTG is basically uh, we will discuss it at length when we come to uh, this topic, uh, when we talk about it, I guess it would be after uh, the mid -sim exam. You know, uh, uh, whole process of evolving as a much more better human being is what uh, is the focus of positive psychology. Okay. Uh, we will now uh, talk about the medical model uh, with respect to psychological adjustment. Now, the disadvantage of applying medical model to mental disorders and behavioral aberrations are that it does not allow understanding of full range of human functioning. Means, uh, whenever you take a given situation okay, and you try to uh, look at the possible forms of uh, responses that any individual can elicit, okay, the range would be too, 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 too wide. Okay. Now, the moment you start applying the biomedical model and hence try to uh, know, stick things in uh, rigid frameworks, okay, you have difficulty because you do not uh, allow yourself to look at the human behavior in the widest possible uh, range. Okay. You have a limited domain within which you start uh, you know, looking at those behavior. Two, it emphasizes on the negativities by highlighting pathologies. So, it does not uh, look at what you have, rather it asks for what you does not have. Okay. Uh, for example, uh, if you are asked that, uh, do you have a sound sleep okay. or uh, do you have a stomach upset, do you have a periodic uh, body aches, okay. you basically count on how many of these negative things do you have. And, but when you count it, you do not say that, oh great, you have only 4, there could have been a possibility of 44 more uh, types of symptoms. No? Thankfully, you have only 4, but that is never uh, told to you, you are just told, oh you have 4 symptoms, means others should have 0. Okay. So, the strengths are never discussed, it is always the focus is more and more on the negativities. And then the strength of the human being is always disregarded, if you keep on extending biomedical model to psychological adjustment. Because, uh, 
there are uh, we will discuss all these things in the coming days that there are uh, no uh, issues like say your own resilience means uh, your ability to bounce back uh, whenever you face a negative uh, situation in your life we do suffer in that process but then we do also have the uh, capability of bouncing back you have the ability to cope with the situation so you struggle with it and finally you know it's not at always you sink uh, when you are in that type of situation rather you uh, know struggle for some time and then you sail across okay now this course will uh, focus more or less on the realization of the human potential so even though we have been talking about uh, you know these issues as of now okay the focus has been on uh, aberrations and pathologies, but by and large this course will focus more on the potential rather than looking at the symptoms, uh, except for the last unit where we would be talking about certain types of psychological problems. Now disruption in the harmony at the personal and social front can contribute to mental pathology. Okay. Uh, however, there are examples of life adversities that positively influences human beings. No? Uh, right now, we took the example of uh, PTG, we will have many, many such examples in the coming days to talk about. And we should also be able to look at uh, the fact that even though uh, no people deviate and there could be a wide range of normal forms of behavior, even though you show certain degree of behavioral aberration, it does enjoy social acceptance. Okay. It is not that there are uh, no very well demarcated black and white lines in terms of social acceptance of behavior. There are there is a you no know, huge gray zone where uh, although it is aberration, but it also has certain degree of acceptance. Okay. There are many many such examples. Now you can take the examples of uh, acceptance of certain forms of marriages in the society, for example, uh, whether uh, uh, love marriages are accepted or not, inter-caste marriages are accepted or not, inter-religion marriages are accepted or not, uh, whether uh, uh, one can be uh, uh, an unwed mother or not. There are several, several such issues which you realize that grossly violates the social protocol, but then it has acceptance. Okay. It is not that because you have done this and therefore, this is a pathological behavior. Okay. It is not defined that way. So, in this course, uh, what we will be doing uh, is that we would be looking at uh, know, uh, different potentials of the human being uh, that has to be uh, know, recognized and we would also be looking at all formats of uh, know, uh, be behavior, which can be fit into the normal range. We would also look at behavior, which does not fit into normal range, but still enjoys certain degree of social acceptance. And at times, we would be looking also at the behavior, which are otherwise classified as disorders.